What's up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel and whatever platform you are listening to this on. I just want to say I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for being a subscriber. And if you have not subscribed yet, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and subscribing to the platforms. And if you're listening to this on YouTube while you're at it. Go ahead and hit that like button. It's like walking into the room and hitting that light switch. We just want to go ahead and brighten up the place and let's get into this conversation. It was several weeks ago, the story came out about the people who were kidnapped while they were in Mexico. And when you first heard the story, you were wondering if these people were going to be found alive and you... Also, I think most people did not assume, just being honest, I have to just put that out there, a lot of people didn't think that the people who were kidnapped in Mexico were African American either. And I'm just saying because of people that I spoke to, and it just really wasn't something that a lot of people thought or expected. So when the people were found, and unfortunately, some of them did not make it, and some of them did. The details just didn't really add up. Now, one of the details that I found curious was the fact that these people who traveled by vehicle from my state of birth and residence, South Carolina, traveled by vehicle. They drove to the country of Mexico. You don't really hear about a lot of people driving from South Carolina to Mexico. Granted, South Carolina is in the, in the South, but it's not a border state. It's not Texas. It's, you know what I mean? It's, it's a ways up here. So it's just not something that a lot of people think of when they hear of people from South Carolina traveling to Mexico. You usually think of these people as travelers who are flying. So that's one detail. Another detail that really just didn't make sense was the fact that they were saying that one of those travelers was traveling there to seek plastic surgery, an abdominoplasty to be more exact, a tummy tuck. And I'm speaking from my own experience. And if you want to know why, you can go and subscribe to my other YouTube channel. I do have a link to that in the description box. But... That is a very intense medical procedure. I don't care what country you're having it done in. I don't care. So to think of someone who is traveling to another country to get plastic surgery done, you are not going to be driving there. Even if you're going to be staying there for a period of time, because of an abdominoplasty is a procedure that, again, is extremely intense, the recovery period is lengthy and you have to be so careful about how you are positioning your body. So to be sitting in a car for a long period of time, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, the survivors, they did an interview recently on CNN just sharing some of the details and So I'm going to play some clips of that, and then I'm going to get back into my conversation. Williams and Latavia Washington McGee joining me now. Thank you so much for for being with us. So what happened when you crossed over? We turned down this little side road because we was going to see if that led us to the destination and we was going to turn around. We heard a car beat the horn and pulled around us. Zendel was in the back seat. He said, don't stop. He saw a gun. We drove through a few streets and corners until we got back on the main street. Mm-hmm. And that's when a gang of shooting started. Zendel and Shahid, they jumped out to run, and they were gunned down. They was at Tay window beating on her window with um, a little gun, probably a 9 millimeter. Mm-hmm. And I jumped out of the driver's side. And when I jumped out on the driver's side, that's when I was shot in both legs. We was on the ground for maybe like 10 minutes after they took everything from us. And I guess whoever told them to bring, just go ahead and bring us with them. That's when they loaded us on the back of the truck. And your two friends, were they still alive at that point? They were alive, they were alive. at that point. I couldn't see Shahid because he was like behind me. 
but I could see Zendel back. He was hit two times in big chunks of meat was gone out of him. And then we rolled probably 10, 15 more minutes. And we got to the spot where they was taking us, the investigator interrogated us more. And that's when Shahi said, I love y'all, I'm gone. And he died right there. In the back of the truck. Yeah, that he loved us and he was gone. That was the last thing he said. And that was in the back of the pickup? Yes, sir. Were you able to say anything to him or? I just told him I was sorry. So you finally arrived at this destination. What, what was it? It was a... It was a house. But a lot of them made sense outside with guns. Putting on Diablo mask, red plastic mask. They, they put masks on? Yeah, I was putting the guns to our head, telling us not to look up, things like that. Had you gotten any kind of medical treatment? The cartel took us to a clinic after we left from the spot where they was questioning us at. They told us, they was like, um, I guess after they kept asking us and our questions, our answers never change. They said, um, well, we're going to get, we're going to get y'all some help. And what kind of treatment did they give you? They put my leg on a two by four and then they stitched it up. They, they just stitched it up? Right. Did they give you no pain medicine or nothing? They just stitched it up. And it might have not even been later that same day, all the stitches bust out. Did they check to see if the bullet was still inside or anything like that? No, sir. After they stitched it, they took some, like, I guess, gauze, and they put the two-by-four board under there, and they was wrapping it around like that, and I was telling them the the two-by-four was hitting me in the back of my leg, and it was killing me, so they took away the two-by-four. What about Zendel? Me and him was in the room together, and he was fighting for his life, and... They ain't do nothing. They didn't do anything to treat him. Mm-hmm. Was he conscious? Were you able to talk to him? Yeah. I talked to him the whole time. What do you say in a situation like that? I just told him I'm sorry because I asked him to come with me. And he's like, it's okay. I'm your brother. I'm supposed to be there for you. I love you. And is that where he died? They told after he didn't fight so long, they was like they was gonna take him to the hospital. Then they came back like maybe an hour later and it was like he was dead. So all this time, I mean there's there's guys with guns around you guarding her. Mm-hmm. They was like they we had to stay there for them to investigate us and um different things and like one of them was sitting but a chair like where are you sitting to? And he was looking at something on his phone. And I can remember the sound of that day of when it happened. Like, I can remember the gunshots, the noise, and I heard it. And I asked him, I said, excuse me, is that us? And he said, yes. I said, can I see it? And he's like, hold on. And he turned the phone around. And he showed a video of us being kidnapped and stuff like that. The One of the gunmen actually showed you the video That's that we've all seen of you being kidnapped on the street. Mm-hmm. That's surreal. I mean, what did that, what was that like? I just started crying. It's like I'm never going home. Did it in any way help you to know that this video was out there, that people yes, at least it felt, knew? It felt, I thought maybe it was just out in Mexico. I didn't know that it had done reach the States. The United States, right. So I felt a little better. Like I just didn't know our families knew anything that happened to us. You were, you're a woman in custody with cartel gunmen. Were they threatening to you in, in violence, in sexual violence? I mean... Yeah, they said all that stuff. All that. They did? Mm-hmm. And they tried to make us have sex with each other, and but... told them we was brothers we and sisters. brother and sister, and that she was pregnant. Wait a minute. I, I, they tried to make you have sex with each other? Mm-hmm. What did they say to you? They was like, what are y'all? We said brothers and sisters. 
And they was like, have sex with each other. I was like, no, these are my brothers. I'm pregnant. Okay. I'm, I'm going to stop it there. What happened to them was absolutely horrific and tragic. And I really am sorry that that happened to them. So sorry that they lost loved ones, friends on this journey that they went on. But people do have questions. <clears throat> so I don't know if she was really there for a plastic surgery procedure because that was the news story. We know the news doesn't report everything and sometimes the news is inaccurate or just outright false and lying. So we don't really know the full story. But again, people have questions. So was she really there for a plastic surgery procedure? But if she was, it wouldn't make sense to drive all the way there from South Carolina. So that just didn't make sense. Two, she and he said that the cartel tried to make the both of them have sex with each other even after she said that this is my brother and she said that they um the cartel said oh yeah we'll have sex with each other so she said that she was pregnant so I'm not sure if she was just lying to them about being pregnant for the sake of them trying to stop it from happening but then again the cartel really doesn't care about life. And obviously they didn't really care about them being possibly related because she said that she told them that, no, this is my brother. Well, she said she told them because they said, you know, what are you two eat that to each other? And, and she said, this is my brother. And he said, and she said that the guy said, oh yeah, we'll have sex with each other. So I don't think they would have cared if she was expecting a child or not if they were so gruesome to say, well, yeah, you both are related, so let's see you have sex with each other. Sick. These people don't care about life, obviously, because the two people that jumped out of the car, they shot them. And a lot of people are just wondering, is this the entire story? Were they there for other reasons? And some people have speculated that the reasons were for possibly a, a business deal if you get my drift because why drive all the way from South Carolina to Mexico and not only to Mexico we're not talking about driving to Cancun or Tulum one of these normal vacation hot spots that people travel to to go to in Mexico the place that they travel to was actually listed by the USA as a do not travel site and they went anyway. So people have questions. I, when I heard the story at first, I just was like, man, sorry that happened to them. Hope they find these people alive. And then when I heard that they were from South Carolina and they traveled there by vehicle, I just said, something doesn't make sense about that. And I get it. Some things happen in life that just doesn't make sense, but it's true. So it very well all could be true, everything that they're saying, what they are saying, and what they are sharing and revealing, but people still have questions, and I just don't know if I believe everything that has come out in the news. I, I just, I just am saying, I just don't get that all of these things that they have shared are aligning bad things happen to good people all the time and I'm definitely not saying that anything that happened to them even if they were down there for a business deal that was illegal that they deserve to have any of that stuff happening to them at all I'm not saying that but people have questions because it's just like a lot of things are not adding up and people are wondering if more is going to be revealed so we're just going to keep our eyes and ears open to see if more comes out about this story because, you know, sometimes things happen at one point in time and then later on down the line, a news update happens where some things are revealed and then you have to rewind and say, oh my God, I remember when that happened back in March of 2023. So we'll see. I don't know. I'm not wishing any harm on them. They've been through enough. So hopefully this is it. I don't know. And if it was some illicit, illegal activity that they were down there for, I hope that maybe 
that this will be a wake up call for them to not be in anything like that anymore. But again, I'm not saying that that is the case. I'm just saying that's what people are speculating and wondering. And you just do wonder because it really just doesn't make a lot of sense when it comes to the story about the plastic surgery and going to a country that is not really even known for tourism travel for plastic surgery procedures at all. So guys, I just wanted to talk about that briefly. You can let me know how you feel about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section respectfully. This is Beth and I'm just being beautifully honest. So until the next time, I just wanted to keep it brief, beautiful, and I'm